Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and built out this custom color picker screen where we have these different seek bars hooked up to basically control this area of the UI and build the corresponding color based upon the user's interaction with these different seek bars here. So off camera I've gone ahead and just updated the UI a little bit here. We were missing some text on the screen kind of went ahead and standardized this area here so now this kind of looks a little bit more uniform. We can just continue forward with this implementation here and get this save button hooked up. So my thought process at the moment is that we will go ahead and allow the user to pick a particular color, click save, we will write that to the shared preferences and then we'll go ahead and read from the shared preferences when we need to actually get that corresponding color. So at the moment the user is setting the high priority color so I guess if yeah, this makes sense. If it were to be a reddish color and we were to click save, everywhere else in the app, this is the color they would see to represent high priority. So off camera here, I copied a object from a previous project here called Shared Pref Util. This is just a file that I basically have in all of my projects, both personal and professional, because it's just a helpful wrapper around the Shared Preferences object that is so familiar and uh, helpful inside of Android. If you're unfamiliar with shared preferences, it's basically just a way that we can persist data between app sessions. So it's kind of like a mini database if you were to think about it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and link a card in the top right linking to a video where I dive into shared preferences. But very simply here, we have an init function and then I've gone ahead and just built out a few getters and setters basically to set the corresponding integers and get the corresponding integers to basically save the colors that these users are going to be customizing and then saving them to specific keys here that are just for different priority levels. If we get into saving different colors for dark mode, we can very easily just extend this functionality here to support that and maybe just add a switch or something like that in our UI to designate which color we're changing. So with that in mind, we can bounce back to our custom color picker fragment here and set an on-click listener and handle the user's interaction with our save button here. So we can basically build out here a simple when statement to more or less switch on our priority name that the user is modifying and then save the corresponding value to our shared preferences here. So there we have it, when the user clicks the save button, we're gonna go ahead and fetch our view state from the view model. If we run into an issue here with null, we're just going to basically do nothing. And then we're going to convert or fetch our color here from the different RGB values. And then depending upon which priority the user is changing, we will go ahead and set that information. So rerunning the app here, we basically get this same interaction here. But if we go ahead and click save, uh, it more or less looks like nothing's happening, but if we go ahead and take a look at our shared preferences, we could do so by opening our device file explorer, finding our data package, opening again the data package within that, scrolling down to the package name that exists for our application, and then inside of there, there is a shared prefs folder with basically the file name here, com.dmp2 by shared preferences.xml, that exists because of the way we've built out. Um, this right here and you can see here that this is essentially an XML file that just holds some information and we have our high priority set to a particular value here that exists so this number converts to this color here so even though we aren't doing anything with that we are successfully saving information to our shared preferences that we can use later so now there's the issue that when we arrive at the screen here we also want to basically restore the state of this color so that the user can modify what already exists. We don't want to bounce them back to this 000, this black color here. So in order to do so, we actually could take care of it in the fragment. However, we are abiding by the MVVM architecture. So realistically, what we want to do is we want to bubble that information up into the view state somehow. So what I'm thinking here is that the 
priority name gets set basically when the fragment gets loaded and then at this point we build the original view state of our live data. When I think about it we can actually just condense it to this because we're, we don't have to copy anything we're just setting the original view state. However what we can do here is we can find the color based on this priority name. Right, So we can basically do exactly what we're doing here inside of our view model when our priority name to lowercase equals this we're going to have our color equals this is actually the color int right then we can define a color object here by saying color dot value of passing in our color int and then at this point we can build this entire view state here which is kind of nice and there wonderful so we're actually able to build all of the data here that we need the red, green, and blue values and our priority name. So essentially we're going to be able to restore exactly what the user has set so far. We go ahead and rerun this. If you remember when we go to this customization fragment, we navigate ourselves after half a second to the color customization or the color picker fragment. Okay, so we are halfway there. And actually I needed to modify this a little bit. The color dot red or green, blue, that actually returns a float and that ranges from zero to one. So we need to multiply that value by 255 dot round to int to actually get the integer value here for the different red, green, and blue components. So I learned something new today as well. Uh, however, although the color is correct and this part of the UI is correct, we actually do not have the correct settings here on our seek bars, right? They were all set to zero, even though there was a different color that was being shown. So we basically need to update the seek bars with the values that exist here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and see if this does the trick here. So we're doing the same thing where we're fetching our color, then we're gonna go ahead and pull out our red, green, and blue values from this particular color. Again, all the same logic, multiplying by 255, round to int. However, inside of this function, we now have a color callback, an additional, basically a little function here, that's going to receive three different integers and return nothing. So we can go ahead and pass our values, the red, green, and blue back. And if we go ahead and go back to our set priority name function where we're invoking it, we have this little lambda here that's gonna end up running as our callback. And we can see here the red, green, and blue. I've gone ahead and rename those variables so that it's a little bit more readable. And we just go ahead and set the progress of the corresponding seek bars with those values. So let's give it a whirl, great. So now when we go ahead and land on this page, we not only have the color sorted out, we also have the UI updated here, and then these red, green, and blue seek bars are exactly where they should be. So this is wonderful. We get an initial callback of the corresponding values. We set those, and then the user is basically picking up exactly where they left off, all right? So if we had the red and the green all the way up, and we went ahead and saved it, going back goes ahead and just bounces us forward again we see that the seek bars are set properly right if it was just red and we save and go back and then we would come back and just to prove it to you in case we don't think that's good enough boom so uh this is great we are now restoring the state of whatever we have let's very quickly just go and say uh, medium instead of high. This is basically simulating the user selecting which priority they want to update. We're going to go ahead and build that out in the next episode, but for now we can see that medium is now set and there is nothing set in the shared pref, so everything returns zero. We're all good and well, and at, that po at this point here we are uh, not crashing or anything along those lines, but if we save the 106, 141, and we go back wonderful. So we see that all of this stuff is working properly. So here I've gone ahead and added a little toast to say we've saved the color and then we just navigate up to bounce the user backwards. So if we take a look at the flow now, we'll have medium. If we change it to be this tealishy color, we have a little save toast that pops up down here and then of course the other screen is pushing us back here every time, but we will fix that up in the next episode. So at this point here, we are correctly setting the colors to the shared preferences. And in the next episode, I really think we just need to clean up this screen here, if you can see it for half a second before it bounces us back, uh, so that the user can go ahead and select which one they want. 
and then update the rest of the app to use these colors instead of our default colors that we have hard-coded at the moment. So if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.